So, this is it. It's the final episode of Food Theory, my friends. I, I'm, I'm sad, you know, because this has been a channel that's been really personal for me. Steph and I cooking in the kitchen for the last four years. There were so many awesome memes like, stuff the cream in me, and eating a Christmas tree, and hot sauce. I just can't believe it. I know, Sati, I know, it's sad. I'm sad to be leaving. I'm excited for you, but this is, it's a bittersweet moment, you know? Wait, what? Like, no, no, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm pumped that you're leaving. I get to be host of Food Theory. Yeah, that's, that's great. No, no, I, I, I just can't believe that you're gonna be gone and I'm never gonna redeem myself for that stupid cake. Floam, nightmares, forever. Wait, so hold on. It, it's my final episode and you're just focused on your prime cake episode? Yeah, obviously. I mean, if it means that much to you, you could make me a goodbye cake. I can? Sure, I guess. I can have a redemption arc? I, I mean, it is my final episode, but yeah, I guess you can make yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, whatever, that's you. fine. Wait right here. I got an idea. All right. Oh God, what have I done? I'm gonna regret this. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, where it's time for my Just Desserts. You know, when it comes to the four channels, Food Theory has always held a special place in my heart. Game Theory was the first, it's seen everything. Style Theory has always been about the team, it's also the baby of the group. And Film Theory, it's, it's Film Theory. I'm joking, obviously, but that is kind of the running meme about it. But Food Theory, it's always been a bit more personal, you know? It was born in the middle of COVID. It's the first that really required me to be on camera. It's the one that allowed me to connect with Steph in a completely different way, I'll also plan off my own personal fears and insecurities in the kitchen and with food. It's the one where I got to be wackier and a bit more unhinged from the usual format, and food, just by its nature, is more personal. I mean, for proof of that, all you gotta do is go check out the family recipe episode from two weeks ago, which is one of my all-time favorite episodes that we've ever done across any of the channels. By the way, on that note, thank you for all your comments on that video. It's been heartwarming to read all those stories. If there's ever been proof that the comments can still be a place that's positive and uplifting, that one video right there, that is it. I've spent so much time down there just scrolling and reading with a smile on my face. It's been really beautiful, so thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anyway, back to the point. Knowing how special of a channel this has been, what better way to close out my time and transition over to the new host, Santi, than an episode dedicated to both of us. A celebratory cake for me, a redemption cake for him. You see, Santi's had a bit of a prime-sized chip on his shoulder from his last go-around trying to bake on this channel. Santi, can you show the camera kind of what's, what's happening in this school? No. I think it would be really fun and exciting if you did. You know what, I hate you all. So, it only felt right to give him a second chance at the validation that he's been wanting so badly. I'm ready, Matt. Sure you are, Santi. So, that, my friends, is the challenge today. For Santi to make a finale cake. A cake that takes the best elements from the past four years of episodes and merges them together into one perfect bite. The ultimate food theory cake that embodies everything that this channel stands for. Well, everything except for the split icing. Ha, ha, very funny. Hey, I, I just wanted to make sure I clarified. Make sure we're all working on the same page here. So, how you plan on delivering us this one perfect bite, Santi? Well, I figured I'd bring in a couple of members of Team Theorist, ask them for their favorite episode, and then use those as the key ingredients for this cake. Uh, if I may borrow a phrase from John Cena, are you sure about that? What do you mean? I'm just saying, they're not gonna make it easy on you. In fact, I'd expect them to outright troll. Yes, hi, hello, it is I, head editor Dan. I love that you always feel the need to clarify that. You guys keep putting it in the script. I'm just reading the lines, Matt. So, what's your your favorite episode of Food Theory. Well, that's easy. It has to be the Mountain Dew pizza episode. Rarely has there been a pizza that has actively made you want to brush your teeth after consuming it. This is gonna be really healthy. This, you're gonna wanna add this to all of your hot summer body diet. Is that because it was one of the first ridiculous cooking episodes? No. Was it because that episode has the highest volume of puns per minute? It most definitely was not. Oh, I know it wasn't because of the camera work. That whole episode looked like we rubbed Vaseline over the lens. If you must know, it's because that was the first episode I got to voice. And it gave me the chance to shade you in post the entire time. Wait, who are you? This is my show. It's, it's me, head editor Dan. You hired me. He then added some food coloring to really give it that green pop it deserves is what he wants me to say but i know the truth i see all the footage matt and i know what really happened he forgot to mix in the gel food coloring and they had to scramble to try to put it back in here's the before here's the after look we're good editors but we can't fix every mistake also never say fix it in post or i will come directly for you oh my gosh you are so right i uh, yeah i actually think that might have been the first episode that anyone outside of me got to voice must have just blocked that 
that one out of my mind. Or maybe I was just delirious. Again, I was very sick for that episode. I mean, in total, I think there's been like, what, four episodes across the 2,000 videos we've done? No pressure there, Santi. You do realize Mountain Dew is a terrible cake ingredient. Yes. Yes, I do. Good luck. As I was saying before, are they all going to be like this? Oh, uh, no, not all of them. Just most. Next up, it's Kai, our new social media manager. Kai, what's your favorite episode of Food Theory? My favorite would probably have to be the Christmas tree episodes. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Welcome to the job, bucko. I just said you had to make a cake. I didn't say that you also had to let other people choose the ingredients for you. You did that one for yourself. I'm sorry, Kai. Please continue. Thanks. Overall, it was just a solid narrative arc. Watching the evolution from the first year with you and stuff, just munching on the bark. Yep. It's tree. It's me eating a tree. My saliva is just getting sucked right into this stuff. Mm, it smells like Christmas. Oh, it's so good. It's all so delicious. To watching you make cookies out of them and pranking Steph. It's, it's literal sawdust. <laughs> I mean, it's what? How much sawdust is in here? 30% by weight. <gasps> And then finally getting to something that was actually edible and getting to be a part of that, that was nice. You know, it's not that bad. Wow. Green pine. You do realize who created those recipes, right? It, it, it was me. Cool. Well, bye. Thanks, Kai. Next up, Amy. Amy, what's your favorite episode of Food Theory? Santi's gathering ingredients for a grand finale cake. Hmm, favorite episode. I I think it has to be Panera Bread Gloves because it brings together my two favorite things in the world, fashion and carbs. Honestly, I love them both so much. They're perfect together and they're perfect for this episode. Bread? Bread is perfect for the cake episode? Yes, it is bread, it is cakes. They're the same kind a thing. One just has fashion sense. <sighs> Is it too late to quit? Yes. Yes, it is. Thanks, Amy. Hey, Ash. Hey. What's your favorite episode of Food Theory and why? Ooh, okay. My favorite episode is actually kind of a personal one to me. I really like the Oreo episode. Oh, thank goodness. Finally, a normal cake ingredient. Uh, is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. You know how our episodes are designed to teach people stuff? Yeah. Well, Santi's learning a lot today. Tell me about Oreos. All right, then. Well, one, I was just really proud of the work I did in putting that whole shoot together. But also, man, did it serve some absolute absolutely incredible memes. Like, oh, look at that thick layer of cream in there. I want that thickness inside my body. Nope, don't say that. I should not have said that. It's hot, I'll give it that. Oh yeah, you can see it melting. My poor fingies. It's hot on my fingies. Set it on a plate. Set it on the plate, they say. Don't burn your fingers, they say. Just blew it off, Jason. I know my saliva is heavy. I've got the heaviest saliva in the business. Sorry. My good dude, you were so questionable. Continuing around the office, Lee gave us the Diet Coke taste test because he's also addicted to that sweet, sweet nectar. Josiah gave us Prime Exposed, and Tom added the TikTok favorite, Pink Sauce. I hate you, Tom. Okay, it could have been a lot worse. Just feel lucky no one said the Kentucky Fried Chicken episode or the Cabbage Soup episode. But uh, what about you, Santi? I'm curious. What's your favorite? You're the one taking over the channel after all. I mean, I'm not doing myself any favors with this one, but it's actually the fries episode. Never order McDonald's medium fries, I think is the official title. It was one of the first on the channel. Actually, it was the first. I just like the science of it all and thought it did a good job of showing what this channel is all about, you know? In general, the fry episodes tend to be really fun. Sprite and fries, another personal favorite. So you've got yourself Mountain Dew, Diet Coke, bread, spruce, Oreos, pink sauce, and french fries. Is that enough ingredient inspiration for you? I feel like I should quit while I'm behind. You think you can find a way to fit it all into a cake? Eh. I have some ideas. Well, with everyone's favorite episodes compiled, it's time for me and Steph to head to the kitchen one final time. At least one final time on camera for content. It's not like I'm never gonna eat again. We were there to see how Santi might try to fit all of this into something even slightly resembling a cake. And as it so often does, things immediately got off the rails. Who define for Steph and I who are not in the bro community. We're not bro dudes, yeah. as it were. So, and so, can you explain the dap? Yeah, if I were to get <laughs> dapped up, what would I do? For context, Santi had called Justin to get dapped up, and we were intellectually curious about what this mating technique was. Like researchers observing gorillas out in the wild. It's in the the hand motion. You look well, like you're doing a little Edelweiss it, motion. Yes, <laughs> if you're a bro, you're too cool for a handshake, right? Handshake, you go in firm, up, down, release. That's that's how you do it. That is the hope, yeah. Yes, there, Maybe, cool, cool, yeah. yeah. Dap it. Oh, God. 
Dap it. Oh. I get very intimidated by hand-to-hand -hand interactions that are not that. I don't read people all that well, and so I can't I can't just like flow with it. You have to remember cool peaks in high school, right? So you have to think about it like you're the kid in the back of the class. Not. You're not trying hard. You don't want to like go in with a lot of emphasis or anything. You just like you just want to go just Cup it. Yeah. Cup. You want to get the the clap, and and you are could we, do that. Doing but, bro? but you could just do that, and like you just have to be relaxed with it. Like you wanna you wanna get a good clap. Okay. Nope. See. Nope. You're gonna go from here, from here, <laughs> and we're gonna clap like that. Okay. And then just that. That's okay. it. All right. Ready? So just relax. There you go. Wow. Okay. Well, you you exploded it, but that that, <laughs> was, that was a good clap. I really try <laughs> to avoid con like physical contact with young children entirely. I that's, do too. That's not really I what I'm going too. in for. But Sati. if you're driving around and a kid just kicks a sweet nolly tray, you're like, hey, <laughs> dap him up. What? I honestly can't tell if he's being ironic or not. Is this a bit? I I, I don't get it. Regardless, we were all set with the ingredients. It was time to get cooking, but not for one final sick burn from Steph. We're gonna take all of that and mash it into a monstrosity that we will call a cake. You've called a lot of things cake in the past. Right? <laughs> and you called even more things calzone, and none of them were right. You know what? You're lucky I didn't put ricotta in this cake. I was this close to doing it. It would have made it closer to a calzone than anything you've made before. Oh, she got you there. That, yeah, actually. That, that was a good burn. Uh, uh, yeah, Steph, <laughs> hit me up with that, hit me up with that dab, girl. Oh, yeah. Hit me up with that, girl. <laughs> You gotta practice the handshake. Oh, yeah. Got it. See, now this episode's never gonna see the light of day. So how did Santi expect to work all of these insane ingredients into one tasty, or if not tasty, at least edible, bite? Well, Mountain Dew and Diet Coke were set to be the sponge layers. Santi insisted on another round of trying to make frosting out of Prime, and um, and then there were the croutons. Amy's favorite episode uh, yes. was the bread gloves, so we're gonna take the croutons and we're gonna pulverize them into okay. a little bit of a, of a dust. Man, nothing says delicious cake quite like salad <laughs> croutons. It's actually really interesting because you you have the the airiness of the cake. You know what? You'll see. You will see. You'll all see. I love it when a cake is described as interesting. interesting. From the guy who also says that he doesn't like cake. All right, Dapper, what do we got going on? Uh, I'm gonna have you both pour in the respective fluids, and we're gonna pour them into the cake molds. It's pillowy and cloud-like, actually. It's, it's very fluffy, got lots of air in there. It's so fluffy. So the science behind this is actually really cool. Instead of baking soda and baking powder, our levitating agents are the sodas. In using the sodas, the carbon dioxide that's released creates those similar air bubbles and causes the cake to rise. Plus, we get to incorporate the flavors of the Mountain Dew and the Diet Coke. It's honestly all super cool. With the sponges in the oven, Santi encouraged us to get some of our aggression out on the croutons. Oh my god! What can I say? Between FNAF lore and hot wings, I guess I have some pent-up rage from 13 years on YouTube. I meant like, take the bag and smash it. Oh, you are, that was manly. I like that. Yeah, you were like, I don't care. Yeah, there you go. Bro. Bro. <laughs> what, what, yeah, what is this last part? There you go. Oh. Cause yeah, you're like, oh, 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 wow, you are wildly efficient. I am very pro therapy. I am also very pro punching croutons really hard. With the croutons all mashed and the Fred Bear trauma all processed, it was on to the prime frosting. It's like strawberry ice cream. I was gonna say it does look like strawberry ice cream. Oh, very much so. How's it taste? Mmm, very thick. So sweet. Ooh, very sweet. Ooh, very sweet on the front end, very sour on the back end. Yeah. Very interesting This is ride. gonna go very well with something else. Huh, interesting. I am so optimistic about how this is gonna go. Let's go! See! Anyway, um, this was, that was my own private moment. At this point, Steph and I were dismissed from the kitchen so Santi could surprise us with the final reveal. A few hours later, it was time. How would you like this to be, re is there a drum roll? Should I lift? Like, uh, I'll how lift would you it for you. I'll like lift it small, for you. Was this like a small laundry basket? <laughs> <laughs> okay, where did this thing come from? No cloche, no nothing. <laughs> it's, it's for my undergarments, but. <laughs> you know, you know, hold up. It's his boxer hold basket. Up. Here. <laughs> Literally on our cake. Hold up, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save you on this one, okay? Yes. This is, this is the last time I can do this for you, too. Okay. He chose this mm. in commemoration of us cooking in a dryer episode. <sighs> Santi, that was brilliant. Wow, Santi! Way yes, to go. I'm dap so glad you worked that, that in there. There we go. There's no dap up here. Oh, oh we dap. Said, we we oh, forgot God, in the no. course dap of what is definitely the same day how to dap up. Yeah, here, dap it, dap it, bro. Mm. Why do you hit my wrist? It's like, you miss my hand every time. Am I, that's how you dap? That was better. We couldn't get a smoke machine, so sorry for the lack of presentation there. But, okay. oh. so. <laughs> That's 
awesome, actually. This is really pretty. Okay, so what happened here, <laughs> what had happened was. It's french fries. Yes. It's fries. It, if you look at it from above, which yes. we have that shot, it is the food theory <laughs> ring. I oh, oh, it's, oh, that's the food theory. That's yes, the quadrant. That's, oh, the, yes. that's the quadrant. I get so, it. So that was <laughs> supposed to be that. I thought it was that. a random yellow blob. I thought so too. I, I thought it was like someone peed on the cake. <laughs> I thought so too. <laughs> well, there goes my art. I'm like, um, we've done a lot of weird episodes, Santi, but we haven't done like, can I drink my own urine? That's more of a Good Mythical Morning style episode. <laughs> well, I mean, you were we were talking about tears and I was thinking bodily fluids. No, um, th this- e Easy to confuse what comes out of your eyes with what comes out of other parts of your body. Both salty, I guess. I don't know. So, <laughs> the yellow pea stain notwithstanding, we were a far cry from prim cake. Even down to these cute little crinkle cut cake fries on top, such a cool detail. So with everything ready, it was finally time for my last chance to stab something on the show. Ready? Can I stab the cake? Uh yeah! Oh, that was satisfying. That was good. Ooh, sliced Ooh, right down, right the, middle down of that Oreo. In the middle of an Oreo. Right, right through that double stuff. So what we should see here, Ooh. hopefully, is uh, a is nice- Is that you that I just heard swallow really hard? It's like Santi in one moment just went through the entirety of puberty. <laughs> what we should see here, hopefully. <laughs> it's the five stages of grief that you're hearing there. This is my opportunity <gasps> to do it. Ooh, that looks so good! If any regular person were to see this, they would probably say, wow, what a delicious pistachio and chocolate cake. But nope, this is food theory. That is Mountain Dew and Diet Coke mixed with prime spruce and crouton. Yum yum. You can't deny that it actually looks great though. But obviously the big question here is how it tastes, which is why it was time to get everyone on the team in the kitchen ready to taste for the moment of truth. Mm, it's very mm. chocolatey, Diet Cokey, mm -hmm. and rosemary-y. Interesting. All right, everyone. Happy hey. next happy next chapter of food theory. Here we go. Woo! Food theory, bite. After an awkward pause as everyone chewed and processed their feelings, the results were in. Very thick. Uh, dense. <laughs> it's fudgy. Mm. And they were mixed. Acceptable. <laughs> I got some crunch in mine. Oh, oh, yeah. Was there supposed to be crunch? Do you not see the Oreos on top? Oh, God. I ate the inside. <laughs> no, I think the yeah, I was gonna yeah, say, you, found the, the you found the Where crouton. There's so, crouton in there. So the croutons are crushed in the middle for a little bit of texture, a little bit of flavor. So you're saying the weird uncanniness of the crunch in the cake was calculated. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I, I really needed to like know. Bread gloves, okay? Where was the ranch? In the pantry where it belongs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's on to you? I really like it. I like it. I think it's pretty great. So is a cake definitely an improvement over prim cake? I feel it fair to say that Santi got some level of redemption. But again, the assignment was to capture food theory in a single bite. And for that, it absolutely passed with flying colors. You know what? I think that this cake is a perfect representation of the last four years of food theory episodes. It's not the tastiest cake I've ever had. It's not the most precise cake I've ever had. It's a little bit messy. It's a little bit homespun. There's a lot of sugar involved. A lot of sugar involved. A lot of weird flavors thrown in there. If I were to pick a cake to perfectly encapsulate everything that we've done here on our time, this is a good one. Thanks, Santi. I'll, I'll take that. I'm a kid who grew up scared of food. Home cooking for me was Burger King and Pizza Hut. When I started this channel, I could make popcorn on a stove and the occasional pizza. For crying out loud, my healthy food advice was to not order a medium fry at McDonald's. This wasn't ever about being the best chef or giving you the perfect recipe for fine dining. It was about this. It was about curiosity and exploration through food that might lead us down some pretty weird and awkward paths. Hey, you guys. Happy <sighs> tweet. What, what is this? <laughs> it always ends up being a good time. And now I look at where we are. I look at where I am. I can make a delicious fried chicken better than KFC or a perfect replica of my grandfather's delicious Polish soup. I can talk your ear off about the bioavailability of iron and spinach or the healthy fats in macadamia nuts. I've survived the world's most intense hot sauces and months without sugar and caffeine. I have literally fixed two cookbooks. I've made a delicious meal out of a Christmas tree and salted popcorn with my own tears, which I could do again today. I've even cooked a juicy, flavorful, medium rare steak in a freaking dryer. I look at this channel and I'm proud. I'm always proud of the theorist community across all the channels. But with food theory, I'm proud of me. I'm proud of my growth. I'm not scared of food anymore. I'm not scared of the kitchen anymore. And I understand more now than ever about the stuff that's actually going into my body. I've grown more here personally than any of the other channels. And that's really special. So uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that brings us to a close here on Food Theory. Stephanie? Yep. 
thank you for being my cooking partner for the last four years. No problem. We didn't burn down the kitchen. That's all that matters. Right? So uh, thank you for that journey. And Santi, I look forward to what the next four years have in store for you. With that, for one final time for me on this channel, remember, say it with me now. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.